Hey guys, this is Goku, and on this channel we talk about poker and ideas that can improve your life. So if you're interested in that, go ahead and click the subscribe button, because I'll be honored to have you here. Today we're gonna jump into Poker Snowy, and we're gonna play... Eh, we're not gonna play. We're gonna go through another hand analysis. We're gonna import some mm, new hands uh, and go through them. I'm kind of thinking that maybe I can just import all of them at the same time. Let's see how that works. Quite curious about that. Mm. I was actually very surprised that, you know, during this last import it only got 396 hands. I think in this file there's like probably a ton more. It is, and as we can see here with this multiple import, we've got 1300 hands, so quite a lot. I'm just thinking if we should approach this uh, holistically or go through them one by one. Mm. Well, let's see. Yeah. Maybe it's better to go one by one. Okay, it takes a while and it puts us at uh, intermediate level. If we load them all at once. And there's 30, bl 30 blunder blunders. How about if we just go through the first one? Okay, the first one. Is the biggest pack? No. Uh, which one is this? Okay, this one's. Yeah, this one's got nine hundred hands. Let's let's see uh, all of them. We got eight blunders, so let's browse through them first. So they may be. Well, now it says 21 bl blunders. Let's see. Let's let's go through this. Mm. For our first hand, our first hand, and yeah, just so you know, these are all tournament hands, and Poker Snowy uh, just treats everything as, as if it were a cash game. So mm, it doesn't take into account any, you know, ICM calculations uh, or anything. So keep that in mind. We see here pocket jacks on blinds uh, 150, 300 with anti 40. We've got a huge stack on this table, mm, 340 uh, big blinds. And um, we are opening for two, for a little over two BBs with our pocket jacks. We get a three bet from the button. Uh, big blind moves all in, but just as three big blinds, so that doesn't really matter. And we just call here, and as you can see, mm, this is this move is wrong. You are holding a top-notch hand, and even though several players entered the pot already, you should have raised for value. And I agree with that. Uh, we should four bet here with jacks. Maybe not always, but. Probably the, the majority of, of time. Uh, yeah, we should put it like, uh, especially since we're so deep and uh, the villains actually quite deep as well. Well, maybe not that much, but he's got like one, 170 big blinds or something. So if we put here uh, a four bet to like 5k, then um, he would have folded the bluffs, continued with uh, much, much uh, more condensed range. So yeah, I agree. Uh, calling here is is not the the best move. We should usually just. Just. Uh, 
forbade it mostly, but of course from time to time we can we can call. Okay, on the flop, deuce nine deuce. Uh, we check to the three better who continues for half pot or no, for a third pot. And um, and we choose to to call this, which is again wrong. Let me just uh, okay, which is again wrong because mm, yeah, because we've got an over pair uh, on a safe board, and we're playing out of position. It makes sense to to want to to build a, a pot here and to get all these you know shitty hands like King Ten off the spot uh, because he can hit a king on the turn and out draw us. So I think I do think calling here is okay uh, from time to time, but mostly this should be a, a race. And yeah, that's it. And now on the turn, we check again. And this again is a, a blunder. But this is again, you know, based on the on the on the fact that how, how we've played the hand so far, right? We check call the flop and we check the turn thinking about another check call or, or a check race. But uh, in this case, the villain decides to to shut down and, and not uh, bet anymore. And then we have a uh, ten come on the river, and now we actually do decide to bet half pot. And now the solver thinks it's uh, it's wrong, and we should rather check instead of betting half pot, but ideally we should bet quarter pot and with our hand here. Uh, so again, one hand and four blunders in it. But these blunders, are, I think they're because of how we played this hand. We played it more passively and just hoping to... Um, hoping that the, the initial, the preflop raiser will uh, show some aggression, but he didn't and yeah And we of course won the spot uh, the villain showed King 10 off, but um, I agree with the With snowy that yeah preflop it should have been a four bet on the flop it should be a race and on the turn it should be a, a bet and yeah, on the river, on the river, I'm, I'm fine with this. And but maybe yeah, betting quarter pot is a better thing to do. But let's go to to the next hand. Here is a pretty big if you lost as well. Uh, and once again, a, a spot where we have over four hundred big blinds. So. Yeah, these spots are, are, are quite different than your usual uh, tournament spot because once you build such a huge stack, you are looking for taking uh, you know, EV minus, slightly EV minus spots just to keep on building uh, and because you can afford to lose a pot. Uh, but yeah, this, this one happens on uh, 200, 400 blinds with anti 50 and. Uh, and a middle position opens to 2 BBs or, or a little over 2 BBs. Uh, cut of calls. And we decide to call from the small blind as well with this hand. That's all uh, quite standard. Uh, the big blind completes as well. And now on the flop, we see uh, do six jack with two clubs. We decide to check with our hand 
surprisingly the the solver would like a quarter pot bet with our hand here but i usually i think i check here a hundred percent of the time uh, because you know betting into three players from the small blind is just too 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 strong so it gives us if it gives away our hand but well uh checks it checks around to the cutoff who bets 2k and we call here the 2k bet uh, half pot we see the solver likes raising but the, the race here is just a a little ev gain so i would say that's fine the other two players fold and now we have a nine of diamonds on the turn and we check which is fine with the with the solvers play which is in line i would say and uh, the cut of bets full pot now we call with our hand obviously there's a queen of uh, diamonds uh, sorry of clubs on the river and we check which is again fine uh, the villain bets half pot and we call this and this is wrong hmm how is this uh, how is this wrong? Uh, 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 uh. I don't think this call is, is bad. I mean, sure, the flush came. But, I mean, he doesn't only have flushes here. Hmm. This sounds interesting. So we check call a half pot bet. All right, he just calls a uh, a raise. Then bets half pot on the flop, full pot on the turn, and then half pot on the river. Hmm. Interesting that this uh, move is wrong and it's such a, a big EV loss. I would assume it's it's fine. Because of the fact that he bets, you know, half pot. You just need to be right, I don't know, a small percentage of time. If you win like, yeah, 25%, we're breaking even. And I think we will win way more often than that here. But yeah, nonetheless, uh, it's an interesting hand for sure. And like I said, on these big uh, deep stack situations, there's often more going on in the hand than uh, than it shows, and we are okay with taking bigger risks than usually because we just want to to bigger an even bigger stack. And if we win the spot, it's fine. Mm. But yeah, let's let's go to another hand. Here we have a. Uh, almost 3 BB EV loss so let's take this back to pre-flop we've got uh, 350 700 blinds with anti 90 and we are nine handed and we the action falls around to us on the cutoff 
we open for a little over two BBs. We get a three bet from the button, which is called by the small blind. And we of course complete, which is all fine. We see a flop of queen seven jack with two diamonds. Small blind checks, we check as well. And the uh, preflop raiser continues for half pot, which we raise three X and which I like, uh, which is perfectly fine play. And the silver uh, agrees with this line. And now on the turn, five of hearts, we decide to bet three quarters, which is, um, which is wrong. Uh, at least the solver thinks it's it's wrong. The solver thinks we should check here. Now this has got to be wrong. I I have no idea why the solver would think that it's a check. Why would we want to check our hand here? Hmm. It's a it's a weird hand, I have to be honest. You can see the uh, EV difference is is not substantial. It's not big, uh, and if we bet half pot here, it would be you know non-existent. So perhaps the sizing is uh, is the real mistake. We should go lower here. We should just bet half pot. But it's it just surprises me that uh, the snowy, the solver is 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 not betting here. But well, we bet nonetheless. The preful blazer raised all in, and we of course called and. The river was four of diamonds. And thankfully the, the villain did not have a flush draw, but instead had a pair of kings, which we won. And and we won the pot. But yeah, the, the reason why I wouldn't like checking on this turn is because there's just too many draws and a lot of them will check behind and thus and hit on the river, mm, making a, a quite bad situation for us. So that's why I, I, I don't like checking here. But uh, I do agree that betting three quarters here is probably the wrong move uh, or the not ideal move. And it would have been better to just bet half pot. Okay, mm, that would be it for this one. Uh, we've still got plenty more left. Uh, but I do want to keep these uh, videos, you know, not too long. So uh, thank you very much for watching. If you stayed this long, please leave a comment below. Just write GTO or ask any question that you might have. Mm, I will post another video uh, with, with the remainder blunders. One or, or maybe even two videos because you can see that... Uh, it took me quite a while to, to go through these six ones. Uh, so maybe it will be two more videos uh, in the future. So uh, please do subscribe if you're not already, uh, or at least consider subscribing. Like this video and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye. Do you want to learn how to play PLO? Are you a beginner player who's never played Omaha before? Do you want to learn how to crush casual players easily? If so, this course is perfect for you. It's a crush course on Pod Limit Omaha dedicated for beginner players. You will learn all the fundamentals of PLO. You will learn what hands to play, when to play them and how to play them. You will learn the basic strategies that allow you to be a winning player at your home games or microstakes online. If you want to learn PLO quickly and easily, get this course now at gokupoker.com.